Good morning, boys and girls. It's May 29th, and we're going to hear uh, the conclusion, part two, of the story of uh, a flood of friends, um, and the field mice have moved in the church where the church mice and Aunt Snooty came home. Those pesky field mice, answered Aunt Snooty. Oh, no, they're in their own apartment. They're all settled in now, said Mama. Well, I never, exclaimed Aunt Snooty, peering at Mama through her eye, glass eyepiece. I can't imagine they, what has gotten into you, letting those field mice clutter up your storeroom with all their junk and eat all your food. Why don't you think, um, why don't you think we should help a field mouse that is in need, questioned Mama in surprise. Well, maybe a church mouse family, but certainly not field mice. They certainly aren't going to freeload on us. Aunt Snooty is not happy. Is that kind? And Aunt Snooty flounced out and slammed the door. How sad, said Mama. One night, sometime later, Papa Church Mouse suddenly woke up, knowing something was very wrong. He sat up sniffing, feeling danger all at once. He carefully put his feet down on the floor. There was water up to his ankles. Mama, Mama, wake up. Take the baby. There's water all over the floor. You might go to a higher place right away. You must go to a higher place right away. Chris and I will awaken the others. Christopher and Papa ran all over the church basement, awaking the other church mice and field mice. We must all get up on the steps. And now they're having a flood. The poor field mice. Isn't that why they left their field? There was a flood. It looks like a water pipe has burst. The whole basement is flooding. The church was filled with mice squealing with terror. Christopher helped the grown-up mice swim the baby mice to safety. They held the baby's head high above the water, and they handed them up to their mamas. Mama Church Mouse was counting all the mice on the steps. Papa, she squeaked, I don't see Grandma and Grandpa. Church Mouse and Uncle Rudy and Aunt Snooty. Suddenly, Christopher realized that Freddie Field Mouse and his family were missing, too. They'd been right behind them an hour ago, but now they were gone. And the water continued to rise. And he handed them up, up on the steps out of the water. There was a lot of water in the basement. Freddie, though Christopher, Freddie, Freddie, where are you? But he didn't hear an answer, and he began to cry. Just then, there was a little sound from the water. It was the sound of baby mice crying. Peering around the corner of the stairs, he saw Freddy and his family. Each field mouse had a baby church mouse in his paws, holding them high above the water. My goodness, that's a lot of little baby mice. the rescue. And there was Uncle Rudy and Aunt Snooty and their other children, Zed, Ted, and Ned, swimming in the water and floating on some small pieces of wood were Grandma and Grandpa Church Mouse. Papa, look! Field mice have saved the rest of our family, squeaked Christopher excitedly. The, my the mice reached the steps. Aunt Snooty was crying. But you rescued Aunt Snooty, said Christopher. Aunt Snooty turned around to Freddy's family. Oh, please forgive me for the awful things I've said about you. I've been terribly, well, terribly snooty. At that, all the mice began to laugh and hug each other. And the field mice never returned to the houses in the country. But they remained in the church where they had found true friendship. She was sorry, wasn't she, for the snooty things she had said, because they were true friends. Oh, I didn't know we were so close to the end, or we would have finished yesterday. And that's the end. So, boys and girls, this is a good discussion to have. Um, sometimes people live in different places. Sometimes people have uh, different accents when they talk. 
Sometimes people have different colored skin. Does it make them any different? No. God made all, all of us, all unique, all special. No two people are alike, not even twins aren't exactly alike. They have different personalities, and we're to love all of them, no matter what they do, where they live, where they go to church. Um, it's our job to love them and be kind to them. Um, and uh, um, it's a good lesson for today. Um, and boys and girls, how important it is to be kind to one another. Even if they say and do things you don't always agree with, it's important to be kind. In our words, we need to be kind. Um, this is so important for today and every day. Um, so, uh, and what was the verse that went with this story? Let me look back at the beginning. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. Proverbs 18.24 A man who has friends must himself be friendly. Proverbs 18.24 Okay, let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to be friendly one to another. Help us to be kind. And Lord, I pray also in our home. Sometimes it's uh, uh, we're not kind one to another in our own home. And help us to do that. And help us to be kind to everybody in this world. Um, the different ones as well as those that are similar to us. Lord. And it doesn't matter what color skin. It doesn't matter how funny they talk. Um, help us to be kind in what we say and what we do. And not to be like Aunt Snooty and be snooty. And uh, God, I pray a blessing on our mommies and our daddies and our brothers and our sisters and healing anybody that might be sick, Lord Jesus. A special blessing is on grandmas and grandpas today, too. And uh, um, especially if we haven't seen them in a long time. And I pray for our dogs and our cats and our pets. And uh, um, and a blessing on, on each and every family in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day.